as we open up your amazing word tonight, help us to understand just how much you love us as we think about the identity that you have given us. Amen. Has anyone seen Ninja Turtles? Anyone into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? A few of you guys. So when I was your age, that was my favorite movie, the 90s one, not the recent one. I don't have like a time machine. Um, it was like, I've seen the, the recent one on Netflix. It's pretty good. But you know, the whole idea of the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was that they were like these regular turtles. And then there was like this scientific experiment thing that turned them into mutant turtles and they got big and stuff. And then they got their ninja on, and now they're teenagers. And, and so the whole kind of movie, and even the ones back in the 90s, is about them figuring out who they are, where they've come from. And that, that's the same thing that we as teenagers, well, I'm not a teenager, but um, I was remembering during the week that like, um, yeah, like I was your age 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I'm quite old. Um, but when you're a teenager, you're trying to figure out these questions like, where did I come from? Who am I? Um, you know, maybe some of you here don't know your biological parents. Um, and there, there can be that loss, like, well, who am I? Where am I from? Like, how do I fit in this world? Um, and so we're going to be looking at the identity that God gave us. Because no matter if we know our parents or not, no matter if we, we, we love Jesus or don't love Jesus, He's given us each an identity. And so let's have a look in the Bible. That's what we do at Youth Group. So let's open up to Genesis. And I want to encourage you, to bring your Bibles every week to youth. Bring your Bibles to youth. That's why we've been having the hashtag, bring your Bibles. Um, we want you to get familiar with you know, your physical Bible, um, seeing where the passages are you know, in G-teams and, and when we're talking about them up the front here. So bring your Bibles um, and it will help you get into it more and more at home. So we're reading at Genesis 1. It's pretty much the first page. And I love this about God that he, right from the beginning, the first page, he tells us who we are. He doesn't leave us hanging for like 500 pages and like, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this is what you're like. Very first page. So let's open it up. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. It'll be on the screens if you haven't brought your Bible this week. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Uh, there's three things I want to talk about to you about. First one is we're mirrors. You know, like looking in the mirror in the morning? Maybe not. Some do. The second thing is we have gender. And the third thing is we have a job. So the first thing is we are mirrors. Verse 26. Then God said, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So God made us in his image and likeness. Now, what on earth does that mean? Like, Big deal, image, likeness, I don't know. But what does that actually mean? And so back then and still today, people make images, people make statues of their gods. Um, here's a, a famous one. Did I put them in? Ganesh? No, I didn't. Anyone know Ganesh? The, in, the, um, he's the Hindu, kind of one of the chief gods. He's got like that elephant thing with all the arms. You guys have seen that? Have you ever been into like a bakery, like a, like a Chinese bakery or like a Thai shop and you've seen that thing with the incense sticks and little cups and stuff? That's their god. They're offering their food to their god. That's a statue. That's an idol. It's um, designed to like represent their god. And so instead of God saying to us, like go and make a statue, go and make something, go and make an image that, that represents me, you, 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 everyone, all, all of mankind, men and women, children, they're going to be God's representatives. They're going to be God's representatives. It's the way of making a God who's invisible, visible. And that's a, that's a pretty big privilege that the God of the universe, I, I don't know if you catch this, it, it's, it's still kind of sinking in for me that the God of the universe the God who created this whole place, almighty, powerful God, chose you 
made you to be his representative. That's, that's both a privilege and it's a responsibility. You know, all the other animals, and look at verse 14, all the other animals are made according to their kind. Did I put that in, Josh? I, I, I failed at the PowerPoint thing. I'm sorry, guys. But if you've got the Bible, you don't need to worry about the PowerPoint thing. I'll read it out, verse 24. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. We're not just another kind of animal. We were created in God's image. Um, wow. I've forgotten a lot of things tonight. I'll be back in a second. Hi. Have a good break? Cool. All right. How much is this worth? It's, it, it, it's, worth, it's worth $50, all right? Now, um, this is worth $50. Now, does it have $50 of plastic in it? Yes. No, no, because, you know, like, plastic is glad wrap. Um, you know, like, your mum, your dad, whoever, makes your lunch, and you just throw the plastic away. Chip, chip wrappers are plastic. You just chuck them away. Plastic's not really worth a whole lot, and to get $50 worth of it, there'd be an awful lot of it. Maybe it's the ink. Is there $50 of ink here? Yes. No. Because um, you can print like, I don't know, 200 pages or something with a thing of ink. So this has been assigned $50. And, and the thing is as well, like, you know like how criminals counterfeit money? If it cost them $50 to make this, they wouldn't really counterfeit it, would they? So this doesn't really cost $50, but it's worth $50. All right, have the, just lock that in your brain for a second. How much do you reckon the human body is worth? Priceless. So there was this, this science guy. I was going to call him a science nerd, but I like science. Um, there's this science guy who figured out how much you know, oxygen and you know, all the kind of elements and stuff that make up our body, and he figured out how much the human body were to cost if we were to like break it down for its like elements and stuff. Did you know that in your body there is $129 of oxygen in it? Mmm. There is $384 of carbon in it. Carbon. $384. There is $700 of hydrogen in your body. You could make a sweet bomb with that. There is $200 of calcium. And get this, get this. There is 30 cents of iron. Yeah, yeah, wow. Now, if you, if you tally all of that up, plus all the other elements and stuff in there, if you tally all that up, that makes $1,985.77. That's, that's, that, that's how much, that's how much, if you, it, your body is worth in terms of like the chemicals and elements and stuff, it's not worth a whole lot of money. You know, like we could sell... I don't know, it's like, what, 70 maybe? <laughs> we could sell all of you guys and maybe buy like a small boat, which we're not going to. All right. But just like, just like, where's that $50 gone? This is youth, this is youth group money. All right. Just like this $50, it is worth far more than the things that make it up. You and I are worth far more than the elements and stuff that we've made up because... We've been made in God's image. We're his image bearers. That gives us value. That gives us dignity. That's why an, an unborn baby in a mother's womb is valuable. It's not just a blob of tissue um, that, can, that can be killed or whatever. It is a human being made in the image and likeness of God. That's why we as Christians stand up against abortion. The, the fact that we're image bearers means that racism's wrong. Just because you've got darker skin or different shape of eyes or you come from a different place doesn't mean you're any less than a image bearer um, if, if you were born with a disability just because you don't quite function as other people might function 
That doesn't mean you're any less of an image bearer. And that's why, as Christians, we support, we love, we get alongside those that have disabilities. And for this same reason that we've been creating God's image and likeness is the reason that, that cutting, that suicide isn't the answer. Because even though you, you don't feel valued, you don't feel loved, God has put his stamp on you. You have been designed in his image and likeness. That gives you value and worth, even if you don't feel it. That's the privilege part. The privilege part of being created in God's image. But it's also, there's also a responsibility part where to represent his goodness, his kindness to the world. Because he is love, we love. Because he gives, we give. We, because um, um, he is relational, we are relational. We are his mirrors. Whatever God is, we should be. We reflect him. That's the whole point. We are mirrors. So we, we are mirrors. But, and the thing is that we don't reflect him very good because of sin. And we're going to be looking at that next week in G-teams a little bit. So first thing is, we have been created in his image. We are his mirrors. That gives us dignity and value. The second thing is, we have gender. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. How cool, like, in case you missed it from the previous verse, God says it again twice in case you missed it. What are you created in? His image. He says it twice. Don't forget it. You've been made to represent God. Don't ever forget it. But male and female, he created them. There's, there's two types of image bearers. There's a female version and a male version. Having them both means that we get a, a, a fuller, more complete picture of what God's like. Now, gender's important. But, you know, we, we live in a world that's kind of rubbing gender out. You know, um, I, I found out this week that if you were to sign up for a Facebook account, there are 58 different options for gender. 58. It's not just male, female, and I don't want anyone to know. It, 58. Yeah, there's a little, like, custom thing, and then it has this other drop-down of, like, 58 different things. It's ridiculous. Things like neither, intersex, gender fluid, two-spirit, trans-masculine, pan-gender, and a whole stack more that I don't even know what it means. That we live in a world that is, is rubbing the distinction out of gender. Um, you know, parents won't tell their, their kids what they are, you know, male or boy or a girl. They'll just want them to discover what they are. You know, kind of challenge with that is that boys and girls have got particular parts. Um, and, and so while like Facebook and all those other places can, can make all these labels, they can make all these labels, but the truth is that gender is hardwired. It's, in, it's hardwired into our DNA. You know, sure, a doctor can change the outward appearance, but it can't change the DNA that God has given them. And I, I know that there is a really rare condition where some people are born with both, and that's a really challenging kind of issue to think through. But if you've got questions about that particular thing, it is incredibly rare. Um, but I'd love to chat with you about that afterwards. But gender is hardwired into us. We can't rub it out. It's, it's how God designed us. It's how we more completely understand who God is through male and through female and the different perspectives and the different way that guys think, the different way that girls think. We get a fuller picture of, of who God is. But, you know, if some of you are confused about gender, maybe you're struggling with that, don't be embarrassed. I'd love to talk with you. We can chat privately. Uh, we'd love to help you get that figured out because it's, it's a really big thing. Really big thing in today's world. But I just want to say this, that you've been made male or female by a loving God. He doesn't make mistakes. He wants you to be his image bearers. He wants you to represent to the world what God is like as a woman, as a man, whatever that is. So we're a mirror. We have gender. And the third thing is, you have a job. Yay, job. Yeah. <laughs> no one really likes jobs, but this is good news because this gives you a purpose. The world tells you, you're nothing. You're a no-hoper. But God, not only has he made you in his image, 
Not only has he given you gender, but he's given you a job. Verse 28, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So our job is this. The first one might have got some people excited. You know, be fruitful and increase in number, which is code for have babies. And we're going we're gonna to be talking about that in a few weeks' time. Um, so we're not going to be talking about that. And, um, but the one we're going to be focusing on now is this interesting thing. Like it talks about subduing the world. It talks about ruling over the fish. It talks about taking control over the world. You kind of feel like kings. Ooh, the world is my, I will conquer my world. But this isn't, you know, that kind of dictator, I'm going to conquer the world, I'm going to smash whatever, I'm going to make it what I want it to be. This is reflecting, because we're God's image bearers, right? This is reflecting him. This is being his representatives. This is ruling over the world like God rules over heaven. How does God rule in heaven? Kindly. He's generous. There's equality in heaven. There's justice. And that's how we're to live here on earth. But you don't really see that going on here because of sin. And we're going to be talking about that in G-teams as well next week. How we're going with ruling the world, probably not very good. So we're a mirror. We have gender and we have a job. Our, job. our job is to lovingly rule this world. And you know, taking care of the environment, caring for others, being generous, all that kind of thing. This is our God-given identity. We have been made in his image. We're his representatives. The, the, the color of your eyes, the shape of your, your nose, the color of your skin, who you are, where you were born, it was all determined by God because you are valued. You have dignity. And while sin might have, rest- might have distorted that, and, and broken that, and we see that in the world, that is still there, and it's still reality for you. You've been created in God's image. So let's, um, as we finish up, what defines you? Is it what we've been talking about tonight? This, this idea that you've been created in God's image, is that something you think about? Or do you find yourself being defined by something else? Maybe it's the clothes you wear. Maybe it's what people say about you. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's labels or lack of labels on your clothes. Maybe it's, you know, your looks, your personality. Um, and, and perhaps, you know, a, a symptom of that is you get sad when someone doesn't notice your new haircut or your new clothes or um, the fact that you, you, like, flick their hair or whatever it is. You, you find you, you're defined by relationship status, whatever it is. Because yeah, we can spend our whole life pursuing marks and fashion and friendships and all that kind of thing only to have them let us down or change. The only one thing that's constant is, our, um, is how God has made us. He's made us in his image. He's made us with a gender. And he's made us with a job. And, and you know, pursuing, oh, I'm a student, oh, I'm a uni student, I work, whatever it is, all those kind of things change. You know, my life will be complete when I get to uni. When, when I have... When I have that boy, I've made it. I'll, I'll, I'll be the kind of person I was meant to be when I get these clothes. Um, they're good things, but we shouldn't let good things become identity things. The best thing for us to do is to let Jesus define us. And Jesus defined us being made in God's image, made male or female, and given a purpose. That's great news. It's great news that we don't have to aim or, or, or tumble aimlessly through life. We've been given a purpose. We've been made by a loving God. Now let's pray. Now Father, we are overwhelmed that you would assign such value and dignity to us, that you would make us your image bearers, that you would say, if you know me, if you want to know me, look at my people. The, the fact that you would choose us to represent you just blows our minds. And Father, we, we live in a world that's, um, that places identity in clothes, in jobs, in relationships, in, in the, the suburb we live in. Um, 
And so we ask that you would help us to walk in the reality of the image that you made us, that you made us to be your representatives, that you made us male and female, that you gave us a job. We thank you for the dignity and purpose that we have in you and help us to rest in Jesus who restores the, the sin that, that distorts our identity. And it's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen.